Thank you, brother. It's good to be at home. This is home for me. You know, I was born here but not raised here. My dad was a pastor also, like he said. He retired and I grew up in Western North Carolina, but the Lord brought me back home to save me. I call this home. I got saved right there, 2003, April 20th. And I've been here ever since. Ain't nothing better. As April said, in my father's house, there's a place for me. I remember my uncle telling me, son, when you got saved, they put a mailbox in heaven that's got Paul on it. They started building you a mansion. He said, now, how big it's going to be is going to be up to all the works you do and what you do. And Brother Bernard, we're not done yet. Our best is yet to come, brother. Our best is before us. Who's glad to be in the Lord's house today? Praise God. We got a lot to praise him for. Camp meet might be over, but it better not be over for us. It better be every day, praise God. We know the trying times we're living in, but God works when it's the worst of all. You know, we've learned that our light shines the best when, when it's dark. So when it's the darkest, don't put your head down. Hold your head high and say, Lord, though you shake and slay me, yet will I trust you, Lord. He'll bring you through, I promise. If you would, turn to the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 5. And just want to talk about the subject today. You can trust Him. I promise you, He will not let you down. And the Word says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. One of our biggest problems today is to trust Him. We think if we can't see it, if we're not doing something physically, then we're, that nothing is happening. That's the, that's the biggest mistake that we can make as a Christian. Because we never know what's going on in the heavenlies. God doesn't show us all the details. He just calls you to do something. He doesn't tell you step by step how you're going to do it. you got to trust Him and walk by faith. Let's bow our heads if we would. Father, I just ask you, Lord, to anoint me to preach your word today, Lord. Anoint every heart and ear to receive this word. Lord, that we can use it to, to challenge us, to charge us, to convict us. And Lord, we give you praise and glory and honor for all that you're going to do today. And we love you, Lord, with all of our heart, soul, and mind. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And it is a pleasure and an honor to be up here behind this pulpit. It's always good to be able to speak for the Lord. And I counted a... A great honor to be behind my pastor, Jeff. I love that man. He's like another father to me. I remember when I first got saved, one of the things that he did for me, I'll never forget this. The second week I was here, I came in and told him I was battling with a lot of addictions. That Lord, I, I said, Brother Jeff, I don't know any other way to tell you. I'm just having a hard time. And he said, do you have your own Bible yet? And I said, no. And he gave me his very own Bible that he was preaching out of, and I'll never forget that as long as I live. Not a lot of people would do that, but he would. He loves his people. And I just hope to be more like him. You know, and I know we all have our own calling, but it's good to have good mentors in your life that you can look up to, that you know that will hold you accountable. As I said in Proverbs 3 and 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. God doesn't want just part of us, y'all. He don't want 98%. He don't want 50%. He don't want 60%. He wants 100% of all of you. Why? Because he gave all of himself for you on Calvary. And if he don't have all of you, then that means what? One thing. You got one foot in the world. You got one foot in the church. And you know, we cannot be effective if we're like that. But it goes to let us know that Jesus, when he gave his all on Calvary, that same desire and love that he has for us, even when we mess up, y'all, he still, what does he do? He sends forth his spirit to draw you back. That same desire he has for us every day, that should be our desire in our heart every day. We have to learn to trust him. And the only way you're going to be able to trust somebody is to what? Walk with them. Just like when I started dating my wife or raising my girls. They didn't know how good daddy was. They didn't know. She didn't know if she could trust. She had to learn and watch me and be with me every day. That's why the Bible so many times talks about relates to marriage as our relationship with God. If I didn't spend time with her every day or with my girls, they would be like, they don't have no faith in uh, dad. They can't trust that. They don't know what dad does. But when you walk with him every single day with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, saying, Lord, I'm going to do it my way today. I promise you, when you step outside of the, his anointing and his bounds, you're going to make a mess. And you don't know what that mess is going to be, but I promise you, if you'll trust him. That word trust, you know, today's world, you can't trust nobody. I'll just be honest with you. Really? The, the world's crazy. 
I've noticed you get at stoplights now. If you don't go right when that light's green, somebody's yelling out the window, cussing, blowing their horn. And if you don't watch it, real quick, you'll snap back. And before you know it, somebody might get out of the car with a gun. I'm just saying. I mean, that's the world we live in today, y'all. That's why when you get, whenever we wake up in the morning, you better be prayed up. You better be filled up with Jesus because it's going to show. Then the Bible says that we can't serve two masters. It's either one or the other. You can't trust your feelings or your heart. Too many people are going by, well, how I feel today. I feel like praying today. Well, I'm on the mountaintop. I'm being blessed so much financially, spiritually. I'm not going to pray today. I don't need, that's one of your most vulnerable times when you're being blessed for the devil to come in and slip one in on you. You remember the story in the Bible about David? David was supposed to be out with his men at war. But you remember what happened? The devil had him up on that mountaintop at the right moment. You don't think the devil don't know you? He knows your weaknesses. He knows where he hits you where it hurts at. And if you're not where you need to be, I promise you, you won't be able to withstand him. You got you to be strong in the Lord. You, we got to do what God is telling us to do. So without God in our hearts, we are as wicked and perverse as the world. And a lot of church folk don't like to hear that. But I'm going to just go ahead and tell you it's the truth. I'm just being honest with you. Let's be honest with ourselves. As Brother James says, let's be transparent. Somebody pull out in front of you all of a sudden and, and, and you think, praise God, I just had a great church service. Before you know what you're yelling at them out the window, tell them what you're going to do to them. Now me, I like to talk to them in my truck so they can't hear me. And my wife will tell me, she said last night, she'll say, Paul, but watch that road rage. I said, honey, they can't hear me. I'm just talking to myself. But she's right, though. I'm like, what are they doing? They're going 35 and a 55. But you don't ever know what that person's dealing with. You don't know what they're facing. You don't know if they got something going on, a sickness or a divorce or their child's on drugs, whatever. But the main thing is if you're walking and trusting in the Lord, be Christ-like. Be loving to Him. In Psalms 118 and 8, it says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in who? Man. Man. I see a whole lot of that today. As great as my pastor is, as great as my father was as a pastor, they can't get me to heaven. They can't get me to heaven. God's not going to look at me and say, Paul, man, and your mom and dad did a great job serving me in 36 years of uh, ministry. Now you come on in, son. I like what Brother Edmondson said during camp meeting. He said, last time I read it wasn't a family plan in the Bible. It's a personal plan. It's a personal walk every day. When you wake up in the morning, you got to say, hey, Lord, what can I do for you today? As Brother James said this morning for service, Lord, I need to give back to you. He's done gave his all for us, but what are we doing for him? All of us, you know, some, some of us, I, I, you know, you don't never really know what goes into making up a church service if you're not a part of it, if you're not part of the process of what's going on behind the, the closed doors, the teachers, the bus drivers, the van drivers, people making sandwiches for the kids in the back, the singing, the practice that goes on. I know when I joined the choir about three months ago, Miss Joyce caught me walking across the front, and I'm always bouncing around. She said, yeah, you need to be in the choir. And you know what I said to her? Being spiritual? I said, let me pray about it. She said, you don't need to pray about that. You like, to, you like to worship. Come on. And I've been up here ever since. But I'll say this, Miss Joyce, ever since I've been in the choir, I feel a little bit closer to the Lord. I sing them songs a little bit more than I used to. It touches my heart. And all of a sudden, you'll be going through something, Sometimes you just don't know what to pray or how to pray. But the Holy Ghost will bring that song to your heart. And I promise you, once you begin to worship Him, that trust level begins to rise. Before you know it, you're just like, my God, I'm about to pull over. I'm having church. I'm going to wreck and hurt somebody. So we were not created to meet each other's needs. Only God can do that. Too many people are looking. Man's ways are perverted and biased. God's ways are righteous and just. And He doesn't pick favorites like we would. And one thing about God, you don't make deals with God. God's already gave you the best deal you're going to get. All you got to do is come unashamed and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. What I've done ain't right. All I'm asking you to do is, Lord, I plead the blood. Forgive me. Come into my heart. And when I did that that day on that Sunday morning, April 20th, I'm going to just be honest with you. My kids are older now. I don't worry. They, they've seen how daddy lives. I rolled two joints before I come to church that morning. My intentions was to get high when I got out of church. But I didn't realize that the Most High had another plan. And when I come out of church and I hit those doors back there, the devil said, give that to your uncle. 
The Holy Ghost said, flush it down the toilet, son. Don't you help nobody go out there and sin. So when we realize that we can't turn to man, that God's ways will never be our ways, but there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is the ways of death. I see a lot of people doing that right there. Well, Paul, that's not the way I interpret that. And I'm like, well, what are you trying to do, justify your wrong? I said, I'm going to trust God. I said, God has never led me down a path where I failed unless I got outside of his will and tried to do it my way, ever, ever. He don't, he don't um, equip those that are, uh, what, what am I looking for? Um, if you're called, you're equipped. He don't call if you're already equipped. He equips you when he calls you. He'll make a way for you. I know when I first started teaching, Brother Harvey asked me to teach in the adult class. I was scared to death. I hadn't been serving the Lord but two years. I said, Mom, I can't go in there teaching people. Some of them have been serving God 30 years. She said, you just obey God, son. You do what God tells you to do. You're not there for them. You're there for him. And when I got that in my mind, that, that changed the way I looked at things. That changed my perspective. And one thing that I was always taught, son, you better be a worshiper, you better be a praiser, and you better have a prayer life. You do those three things and read that Bible every day, every day. And I've been guilty. I've missed it. I ain't gonna lie. Hey, I missed it. And when I do miss it, guess what? I can tell it. I don't feel as strong. I don't feel as anointed. And the devil knows that. Well, he'll tell you, you don't need to read that Bible this morning. It's okay. You'll be okay. But I promise you, that word you read that morning, it'll carry you all throughout the day. And all of a sudden, you'll say, hold on a minute, devil. I know who I am in the Lord. I'm not going to allow you to do that to me today. So, God is the only one who has our best interest in his interest at all times. Not our husbands, not our wives, not our children. They all fill us. They were not created to meet our needs. We think they are at times, but that's why marriages are breaking up. That's why kids are on drugs. Moms and dads are alcoholics and drug addicts. Why? Because they're trusting in the wrong thing. They're trusting and the devil tries to tell them, well, if you do this, you can just forget about your problems. No, you don't. You may not know what's going on at that time, but when you come back, your problem's still there. You've only made it a little bit worse because of what you've done. And how do we know this? How do we know that God always has his best interest in our interest? Well, I'm glad you asked me. I'm going to tell you. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, I know the plans that I have for you, says who? The Lord. What is the Lord's way? The Lord is always right. Always right. Anybody wants to argue over the word, I'm going to walk away from you. You want to say something negative about the word and it don't line up with the word, I'm going to correct you. What Pastor Dwight used to say, Harvey? What's the word say? What's the word say? Every time I can still see his face, I can still hear his voice. He's the one that, when I first started ministry, I was in the back with him. And, buddy, he was a good first teacher to have, I can tell you that. He didn't take no mess. He, he, hey, you would have thought he was a little rough around the edges, but it wasn't rough. He was just bold. He dared you to believe what God said, and that's how he was. And I would, I'll never forget what he did for me, y'all. I mean, th th this right here blew me away. He was already battling cancer, going through all that. And I'll never forget, I was standing right here at altar call one night. It was after he had preached that, uh, that last sermon he preached. And he come up to me while I was praying. And he said, I want to do something for you, son. I said, what are you talking about, Pastor Dwight? He said, I want to buy you some new suits. I said, Brother Dwight, you don't have to do that. I said, you're going, to, you're going through a lot. I, I said, no. He looked at me as just as plain and bold. He said, son, the Lord spoke to me six months ago and told me to do it, and I didn't do it. He said, what if my healing depends on me buying you those suits? I didn't say nothing else. Miss Gwen, I said, okay, Pastor Dwight, I'll do it. I get down to Raleigh, buy the suits, and I, I call Pastor. I said, Pastor Dwight, they got a deal going on. You buy two suits, you get one free. He said, let's make the devil mad. We're going to get three suits. And that tickled him to death. He said, I've always, he said, I love to make the devil mad. But it showed me that he continued to trust God. He continued to walk with God. Even though he was going through all that sickness, and we all know the story about the kids' ministry, how they started, and I mean, it, it exploded. And of all people of God to use was Pastor Dwight, and I love that story he told Brother Jeff. I don't even like kids. And then, and then what does God do? He used the very one that said, I don't want to have to do And I love what Brother Jeff says all the time. He's right. You really want to serve God? Pick a ministry that you don't have no interest in doing. Pick something that you ain't good at and just say, you know what, God? I'm going to trust you and throw myself into it. Because I'm telling you, 
church service don't just happen. Ministry don't just happen. We just don't throw stuff together and hope it goes well. God is a God of order. And there's a right way and there's a wrong way to serve God. <laughs> Hebrews 11 and 6 says, the last part of it says, He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. What does that word diligent mean? Steadfast. In good times. In bad times. No matter what's going on. No matter what season of your life it is. You know, you're not always going to be blessed and highly favored. You're highly favored every day, but it's not. Sometimes bad things are going to come your way. And if you're not rooted and grounded in God, you're going to put your trust in something that's going to get you off track. Especially in the days where, I, I'm going to just be honest with you. Why Christians are watching the news is beyond me. I care less what they got to say on that news anymore. It, it, it doesn't affect me. Where's my news at? Right here. I got 66 books of good news just for me right here. It's going to tell me where I'm going to end up at, how I'm going to live before I get there. And y'all, I'm telling you, like Tracy Stone said, the shaking's coming. And if you ain't preparing for it, you're not going to get it. And I don't want to miss it. Because, man, God showed up that night, y'all. I don't know if, if you wasn't here, you missed a good one. I can tell you that. God was healing people, pouring out His Spirit. It was an awesome service. God desires to bless us every single day of our life. Whether it is a spiritual blessing, a physical blessing, a financial blessing, whatever it is, he knows what we need every single day. Every single day. Why does he know that? Because he made you. So many times we complicate things and say, the Lord don't realize what I'm going through. He doesn't realize that I need this amount of money. I need this. I need that. He knows it before you even know it. He knew it 2,000 years ago that you were going to need it 5,000 years later you got to learn to walk with him and talk with him. But if you're not spending time with him every day, how are you going to trust him? How are you going to know that, my God, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me? How are you going to know that I'm more than a conqueror if you're not spending time with him? You're not. I see so many people trying to just say a word that they heard Pastor Jeff say or they know a little Bible scripture and think that it's going to be victory then. No, it's not. If you ain't living right, guess what? It ain't coming. There's a right way to serve God and the wrong way. You got to live righteous and holy and pure. And I'm not saying be perfect every day, but you got to strive to be perfect. Hey, Lord, I messed up yesterday. I said something I shouldn't have said. I had the wrong spirit. And that don't mean you just stay in your closet by yourself in your secret place and say, forgive me. That means you go back to those people that you did it to in front of whoever was there and say, I shouldn't have said that or done that. I got to ask you to forgive me. A Christian can't, I can't be that way. It ought to eat you up inside whenever you do stuff like that. But I've learned in my walk, all the things that I've dealt with in my lifetime, I can trust him. I don't care. I hear so many people say, Paul, you don't understand what I've been doing or what I've been to. Trust me. When Paul Manning says he's done it all, A, B, C, D, what's your answer? D, all the above, I was that one. I was that knucklehead that when nobody else tried, Paul tried it. But guess what? His grace is sufficient. Guess what? As that song says, I'm free indeed, praise God. For those that the devil's telling you, you need to hold on to your cigarettes. You got to drink a little bit of wine. You got to drink a little bit of beer. You got to smoke a joint every day. My mom, Paul, my nerves are bad. That ain't nothing but a lie from hell to keep you attached to that bondage. That's nothing but a lie. And the sooner I got that, the more victory I had and the more I began to trust him. And then I realized, Lord, man, you're as real today as you are in that word back then. So, so many people think that, oh, man, this is just stories to make me feel good so that I'll be okay. Oh, no, it's not. He's writing my story today. He already knew I was going to be here today preaching. And you know how good it feels to stand behind this pulpit? When I used to wake up, didn't even know my name, didn't have a wife, didn't have daughters, and now I got a family that serves God. My daughter up here singing for the Lord. You don't think I ain't happy? You don't think I ain't blessed? You don't think if God don't do nothing else for me, he's done enough. He is enough, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so many times we'll get into that bad place in life where we didn't seek him, where we didn't ask him, Lord, order my footsteps. Show me the way, Lord. No matter what comes my way, help me to be Christ-like in every action and reaction. Don't let me act like the world does. Because uh, just like Pastor Hargrove said, they're watching us, y'all. They want to see if what you got's real. They want to see if what you say, hey, yeah, I saw him shouting and running around the church on Sunday.
But he was yelling at that person at the Chick-fil-A on Monday, though, talking about how sorry they were. I'm telling you, people are watching. They're watching every day. And, and one thing I found out, when you truly serve God, I don't care what anybody says, and you're living right and you're living the best way you can, the joy of the Lord is going to overflow in you. People are going to want to be around you. They're going to see that joy. They're going to say, "My." I remember when I worked at CNP, I left them last year after 15 years. God opened up a door for me to do my own thing. But I had guys ask me every day, Paul, you come in every day whistling and carrying on. Man, what in the world, man? And they got on their nerves. You know why? They weren't living right. They was lost. They was miserable. Yeah, they was making more money than me, but it ain't got nothing to do with the money, Brother Bernard. I know what I'm storing up in heaven, praise God. I'm storing my treasure in heaven where moth and dust cannot touch, praise God. And I want them to know that you can have the finest looking wife, the best looking car, the nicest house, but all that don't mean a hill of beans when you stand before the Lord. And he says, what did you do in my name? Do you know me? Do you know him? And if you know him, what does that mean? You're going to trust him. You don't have to let him say, well, Lord, I need to know what's going to be A, B, C, and D. You'll say, uh-uh, here I am, Lord, I'll go. I'll go. And you'll wake up that morning. And, so many times I've done this just because I heard my pastor say it. Because if it worked for him, it'll work for me. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not a respecter of persons. I'll say, praise God, Lord, thank you for another wonderful day. For this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice. And I know not everybody is this. I'll say as vibrant as I am. My wife says I'm a little overdrive, but that's just me. I'm wide open all the time. I'm ready to go. I'm just like a chainsaw. Let's cut some trees down. Let's go. But I'll say this, and I know there at times there's a time to be still and be quiet. I know that. But most of the time, I'm going to be wide open. Here's the way I look at it. I was wide open when I was serving the devil. I mean, think about it. You'd get off work at what, 5, 30, 6 o'clock, rush to the store, get you a case of beer. Get you some drugs. Don't lie. I know who you are. You ain't hiding behind that mask. Let's be honest. Get to the club. Stay out to 2 o'clock. And then after that, the after party started. And then, and then the next morning, what? You get up, you go to work, and you do it all over again. And then we tell God, Lord, I can't go to church. That service is at 930. Or we got one at 11. I, I just can't make it. Tell on yourself. Where's your heart at? Where's your trust at? But if you're walking in his hands... And he's leading you and guiding you. You'll say, Lord, I don't care what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds me, and I'm going with you. I'm going to walk. Walk by faith, not by sight. We got to trust him, y'all. We got to trust him. We must seek him every single day. Not just when we feel like it. Not when it's convenient. Not, when, not only when uh, we're in the valley or on the mountaintop. He desires to spend time with us every day. And that should be our heart's desire also, every single day, no matter what. And we all know, you don't need to watch the news no more. You don't need to, anything else. Look at how bad this world has got. Look at where America has come to. And it ain't got nothing to do with Joe Biden. It's, it's got something to do with this right here. The word's going to come to pass. Bible says he sets up kingdoms and he takes them down. So he'll put the right person in there to bring about his will no matter what. Yes, he used Donald Trump to make Israel, I mean Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. But that don't mean that uh, whatever man says is going to go. They don't even realize they're being used by God. But I know one thing, I'm going to let him use me. If I can get one more person to the foot of the cross, that's my desire every day. For all those that say, man, you don't realize, Paul, I've done a lot of bad things in my life. I've done this and I've done that. I got a Savior that will say, if you'll just trust me. He said, I'll never remember it. He'll never bring it to your remembrance. It's like it never even happened to him. I mean, who else would do that for you? I mean, even us with our husbands and wives or our kids, they, they do something to us. Sometimes, let's just be honest, you want to hold it against them. You want to say, huh, I ain't doing that. I mean what you did last time. But what does God say? Come on, son. Come on, daughter. I forgive you. I'm sorry. Come on back with me. Don't stay out there in the left field. Get back home. And as Brother James said, sometimes he'll go out there as the shepherd and he'll break our legs spiritually, so to speak, so we'll realize, listen, you can't go out there. You can't do that on your own. You got to have me because it ain't our power. It's his power. Greater is he that's in me, that's in the world. Me without him, I'm in the world. I'm nothing. 
I can't do nothing. I can't be nothing. I can't say nothing. But I want my family more than anybody to be able to look at me and say, you know what? My dad was real. My husband was real. I want them to say, you know what? I want a relationship like that. And here's the good deal about it. Everybody can have that same vibrancy, that same fire. How do I know? Because I was just a nobody. Nobody knew. Mom and dad kept praying for me for 31 years, and I said, I ended up in an apartment in East Carolina. For three days, I was on drugs. By the third day, I was hallucinating. I seen demons and devils in that bathroom with me. I had a nine millimeter in my hand. And all I could hear was the devil telling me, take your life, son. You're an embarrassment to your family. Nobody, nobody wants to be around you no more. You don't have nothing to show for your life. And all I could hear was my dad's voice saying, son, don't ever do that. Don't ever believe the devil's lie. And I called my dad at 3.30 in the morning from Greenville, North Carolina, back in 1995. And he drove six hours, full-time pastor, didn't even hesitate, picked up the phone. Hello? Hey, Dad, it's your son. I'm all messed up. Been up three days. I said, I got a gun in my hand. I said, will you come and get me, Dad? Six hours later, you know what? He pulled up. And he just didn't pull up. He brought me something to eat. He put his arms around me. He said, you're my son and I love you. I'll never forget that. And to this day, I'm a 50-year-old man. I'll be 51 in December. My daddy comes up to me and kisses me, no matter who's around, and says, you're my son and I love you. What do you think Jesus does every day you wake up? He's waiting on you.